Well, hello everybody, my name is Mega Drive and welcome back to my channel. So, this is going to be a different video than usual. Um, so, uh, as you know, probably, uh, if you've been subscribed to my channel a long time ago and you check all my videos, you've probably seen my video of me seeing Jupiter and Saturn with my 70mm telescope. And yeah, I am a big fan of astronomy. If I would make a YouTube channel other than uh, goofy videos and video games, it would be astronomy. Astronomy for sure. But now, I have been thinking of something that I searched up on Google and it nothing showed up. So I think I'm one of the first people to ever talk about this. So, if you know astronomy, you probably know what the apparent movement of the sun is. Like, the sun rises at east and then goes down at west. But it's actually the Earth that's rotating in the exact opposite direction, from west to east. But from our perspective, it looks like the sun is rising from east and going to west. No, the sun is not moving. The Earth is the one who's doing the rotation movement. The Earth. And yes, the sun is moving, just not around the Earth. The sun does actually have the rotation and translation movements. Uh, the sun, uh, because it's a gas substance, the sun is made out of hydrogen and helium. Because of that, the sun takes different times from different zones of the sun, take different times to rotate. So the poles of the sun, the north pole and south poles of the sun, take less time because they have less diameter. But the equator takes a little more time because it's a gas substance. And yes, the sun also has an orbiting movement. It's just not around the Earth. Ptolemyo said that the sun revolved around the Earth, which made sense back then. But now that we have technology, um, people now know that the Earth is the one that's orbiting the sun at 149 million kilometers distance from it. But the sun does do an orbit, just not around the Earth. The sun orbits the center of our uh, galaxy, the Milky Way, it orbits the black hole, the supermassive black hole in the middle of a galaxy, which is called Sagittarius A, um, but it takes 235 million years to do so, so we barely notice the sun moving at all, it just takes 235 million years for the sun to do a full orbit around the supermassive black hole in the middle of our galaxy, the Milky Way, which is Sagittarius A. And that is the apparent movement of the sun. And now, for a fun fact, before we actually talk about the apparent tilt of the planets, um, the apparent movement of the sun is that the sun rises at east and then goes down at west. And it's actually the Earth that rotates from west to east. And all the planets in the solar system do this, but there's always going to be an exception. Venus. Venus does the exact opposite. Instead of rotating from west to east, it rotates from east to west. Which, if the clouds on Venus weren't so dense and you could actually see from Venus's point of view, you would see the sun rise from west and go down at east. Mind-blowing, right? And now, here's the actual thing I was going to say. Which is the uh, apparent tilt of the planets. So, basically, um, the apparent tilt of this planet is something like this. So, you see this globe right here. You can definitely see that the, this globe of the Earth is tilted. And this is actually accurate because the Earth, um, in relation to, the, to its axis, it has an inclination, a tilt of 23.4 degrees. And all the other planets have the... Inclination degrees too. For example, Mercury ha is 0 0.1 degrees. Venus is 177.4 degrees. The Earth is 23.4 degrees. Mars is 25.2 degrees. Jupiter is 3.53 degrees. Saturn is like 27 degrees. Uranus is 97.77 degrees. And then there's Neptune, which is like 30 degrees. Um, that's from what I remember in my head. But now, why? Why, like, you know what I told you right now, right? I told you Jupiter had an inclination of 3.53 degrees, which is almost nothing, right? That's almost nothing. It's like an inclination of eh, just a little inclination. 
So why, when we see through a telescope, why does Jupiter look so tilted if its tilt is actually 3.53? The reason why that happens is because the Earth is the one who's tilted, and from our perspective, it looks like Jupiter is the one who's tilted. So an easy way to calculate the... An easy way to calculate um, the apparent tilt of the planet is very easy. We just take the Earth, the biggest inclination, which is in this case Earth. We take Earth, for example, 23.4 degrees minus the true inclination of Jupiter. So 23.4 minus 3.53, which goes around like... 19 degrees, so the apparent tilt of Jupiter is 19 dot something degrees, but the actual tilt of Jupiter is 3.53, but because the Earth is tilted, it looks like Jupiter is the one who's tilted. Maybe, maybe it's the opposite, maybe I'm thinking wrong and the actual operation is 23 and a half, uh, 23.4 plus 3.53, because it doesn't really look like 19, but okay. Um, and But with the planet like Jupiter, you can definitely see it's tilted because it has some characteristics on its surface. But let's take a planet with almost no characteristics on its surface. For example, Uranus. Uranus, the seventh planet from our solar system, and the coldest one with 224 negative degrees Celsius. Because its core is 500 degrees, even though Neptune is more far away, Neptune is, is like 2,000 degrees more on its core, but that is unrelevant information for what I'm talking about right now. So Uranus, as you know, is one of the planets with the weirdest tilt. It's, it's almost like a... Uh, it's almost... Like, not like this, but not even like this, but like this. It's like um, it's sitting instead of being up or like like this. Uranus is like this. It's weird. So Uranus has a tilt of 97.77 degrees. That's the true tilt. But now the operation to know, because it has no characteristics, we don't know if it's tilted or not. But by calculating this, by doing the biggest one, which is Uranus, because the Earth is 23.4 because if we did 23 and a half minus 97, it would do a ne negative number. Yeah, that's basically it. But I think it would give the exact same as the the 70 as the 74 it gives off the other one. So if we do 97.77 minus 23.4, which is the inclination of Earth, we get the apparent tilt of Uranus, which is 74. Dot 74.4 something. I don't know it from my head. I don't remember it very well. Just something like that. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. And that is the reason why when you look at Saturn, it looks so... It looks like the rings are horizontal and not vertical. You see the rings almost horizontal because of the apparent tilt that I was talking about. So basically, when you look at Saturn through a telescope, you will see 27 degrees minus 23.4 degrees that the Earth has, which is like 4 degrees. You only see Saturn with like 4 degrees of tilt. That's why you see Saturn so not that boom, just like this. It's hard to explain this without any pictures. I'm not even going to edit this video, but I just hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So that's the reason... Like, some people probably thought, if Jupiter is 3 degrees, then why does it look like this instead of looking like this? Because of the apparent tilt. Because of the perspective. It all depends on the perspective. And now let's say that you were looking at the planet... Mm, let's say that you were looking at the planet Jupiter... Through the planet Uranus, you would see Jupiter like this or something. Because if you saw Jupiter through Uranus's point of view, because Uranus's perspective, because uh, its axis is 97.77, you would see Jupiter 
because 97.77 minus 3.53 must equal like 94.20. 94.24. So you would see from Uranus's point of view, instead of seeing Jupiter like this, you would see it like this. Because, you know, because of the the apparent tilt that I was talking about. So if you see through Uranus's point of view, Jupiter would look like it's 94.24 degrees because it's Uranus's point of view. It all depends on the point of view and the perspective that you're looking through. So I hope you understood. You probably didn't understand, but maybe you will. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being dumb. Maybe I'm just being stupid. But I really think that if you do the operation backwards, it does the exact same thing. It's, yeah, I think it, if you do 23.4 minus 3.53 is the exact same thing as doing 23.53 uh, minus 23.4. Because if you know, subtracting is not the same thing if you swap the, the numbers. The... But uh, because this operation is all about angles and 180 degrees, people say that Venus has almost no inclination. And then, oh, Venus has 177.4. Are you stupid? 177.4 is like exactly the same thing, but almost backwards. So it's almost the same thing. So that's, that's pretty similar to Jupiter's, actually. It's only like a difference of 0 0.1. It's only like a Mercury axis difference. It's weird. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. Because it's like a reverse operation, because it's all about angles. If you reverse the operation, it does the exact same result, but negative. I'm going to actually test that. Okay, so 23.4 minus 3.53 equals 19.87. Was that the point of 87? <laughs> Uh, uh, ignore the drawings. It's just for Friday Night Funkin' Mod. Yo, 1987. Was that the bite of 87? That's such a coincidence. FNAF. Now that Scott left, I'm sad. But now let's get back into our mathematical thingies. When you're using the plus sign, the addition, the plus... When you're doing plus counts, switching the numbers gives you the exact same answer. But on the subtraction, it's the exact opposite. If you switch the numbers, it gives you the exact opposite answer. So like 23.4 minus 3.53 equals 19.87. And if you switch the numbers, if 3.53 is subtracted by 23.4, it gives you minus 19.87. So it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same count. So my theory on the adding, it doesn't matter if you switch them or not. It doesn't matter if it's the biggest one. So yeah, that's basically it. Ah!